Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is Najwa Husseini with Azadi News. Asking Chair Secretary General to visit Burma. China alarmed after strategic oil pipeline station in Burma is attacked. Three weeks have elapsed since the historic special meeting of ASEAN leaders at the organization's Jakarta-based secretariat, and the bloc's chair and chief now plan to have their feet on the ground in Burma after the end of Ramadan next week. They are scheduled to hold further talks with the military regime leader, senior general Mi Anglai, and concerned senior officials. The visit comes amid growing calls for more assertive ASEAN action in implementing the five-point consensus agreed in Jakarta on April 24. Some critics have interpreted the lack of immediate tangible action as the bloc's effort to buy time for the military regime. According to a high-level informed source who asked not to be identified, the joint visit will be made after Ramadan which will end on Wednesday. The date has not yet been scheduled pending confirmation from Napi Dal. In addition, the source added that the name of the ASEAN special envoy will soon be announced by the ASEAN chair Sultan Hassan al Bukia of Bruni. Two prominent names included on the short list were former Indonesian Foreign Minister Hassan Wirajuda and former Thai Vice Foreign Minister Wirasak Futrakul. Both have wide-ranging experience in engaging with Burma. Wira Judah was involved with the humanitarian task force assisting Burma during the aftermath of Cyclone Nargis in 2008. Wira Sak is a former ambassador to Burma from 1991 to 1994 and served as vice foreign minister from 2015 to 2019. It is not certain how the regime would accept either of them as special envoy. Wirasak is known to be conservative and close to the military in Burma. He got to know several high-ranking military leaders when he served as ambassador. Wira Judah, when serving as foreign minister, strongly criticized Burma over the Rohingya issue. The former foreign minister has also criticized Thailand in the past for towing Rohingya out to sea and demanded an end to persecution of Rohingya in the region. The joint visit by the ASEAN chair represented by Bruni Foreign Minister to Dato Irwan Yusuf and Secretary General of ASEAN Dato Lim Jokowi will be the first by the ASEAN team following the five-point consensus. The trip will allow the chair and ASEAN chief to make a preliminary in-person assessment of the overall situation after the military's power seizure on February 1st. Alarm bells are ringing loud and clear in China after Burmese protesters have attacked a monitoring station of a strategic pipeline that ferries oil to China's Yunnan province. The Irrawaddy newspaper's website is reporting that security personnel guarding the pipeline's off-take station in Mandalay were killed. The sword and machete attack on the policemen was undoubtedly part of Burma's growing popular armed resistance against the regime the Daily reported. The Burmese military has mounted a February coup that toppled elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi, triggering a cascade of high-voltage protests. Though the pipeline has not been damaged, the bolt strike nevertheless has jolted Beijing, and there are reasons why China should be deeply concerned. For starters, the pipeline is important for China's long-term energy security, with the U.S. Navy essentially controlling the Malacca Straits through which a stream of oil and gas tankers pass ferrying energy from the Gulf countries and Africa to feed China's industrial heartland, the Chinese have been seeking alternate land-based supply routes. 
The twin oil and gas pipeline from Burma's China run deep water port of Chukpu, a major town in Burma's Arkan state to Kunming in China's Yunnan province. It is a major part of this exercise of seeking alternative energy routes that bypass the Malacca Straits. This is today's news. To get more updates about Rohingya, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell. Visit our website azaditvnews.com and follow our social media accounts. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.